Special edition of Life at Complex. I'm sorry, Tony, but I had to take this one over. It's Cal, deputy editor of Pop Culture here. But it's not about me at all. We have illustrious guests in the building. Federico Casalucci, Vincent Curatola, and Dan Grimaldi, stars from HBO The Sopranos. Thank you guys for coming through. Really appreciate having nice you. Nice to be here. Nice it's to good be to here. be here, Cal. I'm a huge fan. I was watching it when it was airing. I know some of the people watching, they might not understand like my love or like a lot of people's love but it's interesting that you guys are now coming up in november sopranos mm -hmm. con is coming through celebrating 20 years can you guys talk a little bit about the con what you what people can expect absolutely i think it's the biggest reunion I, ever i think of sopranos cast members it's um, an incredible opportunity to meet the fans that we never met before uh, i'm really proud to be a part of it you know 100 percent, 100 percent. talk about i mean when you guys were doing the show it was a phenomenon at the moment but what's it been like since the show's been away and people are still reacting when they see it i think it's bigger now mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is because uh, it's it's gone into europe it's gone into australia new zealand i, I get emails from all over it's true you know teenagers who run up to me mm -hmm. all day and say, oh my God, Johnny said, I said well, really, where do you know me from? Oh, we're watching Sprouts now. It's like a whole new generation. Yeah, yes, yes. It's, a, it's a brand I, I think that will never end. Last week, Twitter was in an uproar. You know, everybody was so, they were remembering James, so it yeah. would have been his 58th birthday. That's right. Recently, um, can you guys talk about some of your, you know, experiences or moments that, you know, you feel fond and you, you hold close to you about James? I had known James Gandolfini way before The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who didn't know his name, but I knew his name. I was, I was in the field, I was, I was acting and doing theater, and you know, when I got a chance to, to work with him, in my very first episode, uh, which, which I filmed, it was actually filmed out of sequence. It was the second episode that we filmed first, which okay. was called Big Girls Don't Cry. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, about 3.30 in the morning, I just went over to him and I said, hey, uh, James, I just wanted to say that you know, I've been following your work for a long time, and it's a real honor to be working with you. And he just looked at me like this. He, was, <laughs> he goes, you're following my work? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that that moment really told me everything that I need to know, know about James Gandolfini. He was just a humble, really great person. Do you guys have any favorite episodes? There's a lot of Sopranos, but are, do you have any episodes, either episodes you were in or just episodes of the show in general that always stuck out to you? You know, the show basically was a comedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the Pine Lens was the comedy of all comedies. Pine Barrens. Pine Barrens, I'm sorry. That was the comedy of all comedies, <laughs> and I think, uh, I don't know, that was uh, my favorite episode that I, that I it was hysterical. It was I have to agree, one. man. And I, I think one of your one of your episodes, too, where you actually take a leak in, in oh. this pool. <laughs> what happened? You, t t can you tell us a little bit about that one? When I read the script, I said to myself, that's my signature. I'm going to be known as the guy who peed in the pool. <laughs> I mean, everybody's going to know who I am from that. So I was very excited about it. People don't realize the technical aspect of what we have to go through. But there was a, a hose with a tube. No, you peed in the pool, Danny. <laughs> Stop. I've been asked that many times. I've been I'm asked kidding. That many times. No, I've been asked that many times. So I had a tube coming up to here. I was drunk. I had I had a gun in my hand and I had a valve on, on, the, on the tube. So I had to get an arc on it so they could bounce the light off the arc. Now, so, so I'm drunk, I'm this, I got this, I gotta get the arc and, and <laughs> but it, it was it was it was great and it was, and to me it was, it was so I was very excited when I read the, when we read the script. Well, I thought it, it, I'm glad you brought up you know that you you were a recurring character before coming main because it, it's interesting that all three yeah. of you were in a situation where mm -hmm. you were saw a little bit in like you know season one and season yeah, two. Yeah, then they went boom. Was it weird or awkward you know no, being thrust into that? Actually, I was a fan before I ever got on the show, <clears> so my character was only supposed to be in for three episodes, oh, wow. and mm -hmm. um, there was one day. After one of the read-throughs, we would all sit, you know, before every episode, the entire cast would sit and we would read each each role. After one of the read-throughs, David Chase came over to me and said, uh, you know, we're cutting Big Girls Don't Cry. Wait till you see your work in this. And then he walks away. And <laughs> I remember uh, um, Lorraine Bracco was standing next to me. She was kind of standing there with her arms folded. She goes, Federico? Hold on to those words, because it's far and few in between. <laughs> yeah. It was the hottest show around, so yes. every actor in America wanted to be on it. So, so uh, and, and I think the cast was very grateful because it came out of nowhere. 
It was a, it was an unknown to everybody who was in it, and the fact that it became such a big hit, uh, I think everybody on, on was was grateful. It was a very open cast, very loving, and it was a family. You know, we were a family. We have Alabama Three that is going to be at the Sopranos con. Really? They're going to be playing live. They're Walked coming up in from this London. Morning. That's awesome. This, yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a song yeah. before it got put on the show. Sure. Right, yeah. right, right. David, so, David was driving in L.A. I heard this yeah. story way before we came on the air, before production. And he heard this one and said, oh, I love that song. He wrote it down, supposedly. Amazing. And used it. Yeah, he was, he came, his background was music. He was a music yeah, guy, yeah. And, and that's why there was Van Zandt and so, oh, many, that was, so many musicians are on the show. I think that's what... Besides the music. Yeah, 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 but actual musicians. musicians yeah, Frankie Valli Frank and stuff Valley, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what, that's what really made a difference of all the other shows that mm -hmm. that were prior to The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. I mean, the combination of the writing, the acting, and then the music that followed it was just something well, it was that the greatest never saw writing in television on TV history. I to never that. used never used ambient music because that yeah, the ambient sound would have been a suggestion of oh his danger his happiness right. you know, yeah you know, exactly you're, you're but it relied yeah. on the writing and the acting mm -hmm. to bring it over I personally feel like the show was our you know I think I, I think so too I think yes. a lot a lot of what you guys bring up you know in terms of the music in terms of the writing the whole shebang there, there are definitely through lines to the shows that come after. A lot of the stuff that people are saying are amazing TV now. I don't, without The Sopranos, I don't know if yeah. they would have even been able to even been a thing. So, you know, I'm, kudos to you guys. One of the things that uh, David Chase told me he was very proud of was he changed the social life of America. 100%. And every Sunday night, mm -hmm. there was, it was Sunday nights. And there's no show, I don't care who they are, there's no show that has a party, have people partying mm. at, at, for every episode, shutting their phones off, I don't think sure, any don't. show affect, affected any society show. the way we did. Sunday night for our fans became not that that terrible night that you were going to work on Monday. Say, yeah, it was right. no, the Sopranos mm -hmm. were on, and the next day you were going to talk to all your all your your uh, your, your workmates mm -hmm. about the show. One hundred percent. It, it, it made it made Sunday nights an institution. Really I mean, we, you know, you've seen other shows follow suit. You know, anything that is seen as like prestige television, right. nine times out of ten, they're trying to get that Sunday night yes. at nine o'clock. The viewing time. So, and again, credit to you guys. Kudos to the work, you know, that you guys and the whole team did. You know, we really appreciate it. Um, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Sopranos Con, November 23rd and 24th. Um, you'll see, you know, these gentlemen and a number of other, you know, casts. I believe there's a lot of food and games and costume contests, everything. SopranosCon.com is where you can get all the details and information. Um, thank you guys for stopping by. Really Pleasure. Thanks for having Thank you very much. Take care.